Hi, I'm Tony Todd, and you're listening to The Dave and Creed Show. Stay tuned. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to The Dave and Creed Show. I am here with the awesome and iconic Tony Todd. How are you doing today, sir? I'm wonderful today. It's Super Bowl Sunday. Yes. Here we are. We, we are here. Uh, I've, been, I've been hearing you're, you're unfortunately going to have to miss the Super Bowl, but do you want to post some, uh, some thoughts on who you think is going to win tonight? Oh, well, I know who should have won would have been uh, New England Patriots, but we'll wait till next year. You've had a long and varied career in film. You've played Candyman. You've been in Star Trek. Uh, you're also now on The Flash, right? Yes, season two. Uh, season two. Uh, how is it playing Zoom? How is it uh, going uh, all these years and getting to play so many different characters, but yet you still have iconic roles that, that you get every Every it seems like every every decade you've definitely reinvented yourself, you know, because you had Candyman really, which was big in the '90s, and then mm -hmm. uh, the Coroner and the Final Destination series, mm -hmm. and now Zoom with the Flash. Yeah, and uh, there's more to come. And there is more to come. Uh, what's been some of your favorite roles that you've played well, throughout the years? You know, roles are like for an actor, or for it should be for actors. They're like children, so everybody's special. Some have special needs. Uh, I'll never forget Platoon because it was my very first film. The whole Star Trek experience sort of, I mean, to be able to walk my first scene doing Star Trek Next Generation was on board the Enterprise. And so as a, a fan of the original, that was, I had to, you know, steady myself to be able to run in my Klingons so Klingons don't shake. So that was great. And um, I grew up an only kid, so part of my whole journey and survival of those high school years is my imaginary friends in my head. So as an adult, and I also trained as an actor. I'm not just an accidental actor. I have a master's in theater. That's what I do. And so I've learned how to give form and format to each of these visions and interests, and the rest is uh, beautiful. I love what I do. Love it. It sustains me. It's gotten two kids through college. With your more well-known, as you can say, for Candyman, it's probably one of your most iconic. Yeah, um, depends on the crowd. Yeah. Uh, I do have to ask, I, I don't see a, uh, an 8 by 10 of that, but I, I really enjoyed your work on, on Holliston. How was it getting to uh, to play a more comedic role for, for uh, that episode you did with Holliston? Well, I love Adam. Adam and I go back a long time. In order to do things that are outside the box, you have to trust your director. And I trust him explicitly. And uh, it was a chance to, you know, there's that point to try to spoof a certain side of a certain image. It was fun, and we created a great environment. And I just recently did a scary sleepover with him. He was another web. Have you seen that? I haven't seen that one yet, but that's uh, where, where they tell, like, stories from their childhood, right? Mm -hmm. I think I've seen some of the first season of that. I've seen mine. I'm in the first episode of uh, season two. It's gotten a lot of fan reactions, so you might want to take a look. Okay, I will definitely take a look. It's um, all right. yeah, just and now you also are in video games with uh, Call of Duty that. 2, Black Ops. Yeah, um, uh, Half-Life 2, we did Star Trek uh, Renegades. So, yeah. How is it getting to... For another one this week. And yes, I do still audition <laughs> half the time. I just auditioned with two TV series before I left L.A. Oh, nice. Two, I've never done a series regular. I've been in a couple parlors, but I never did a series with it. It wasn't interesting. But um, they convinced me to go in on this one. I wish I could tell you, but it's, uh, it's a graphic novel, very famous graphic novel, and completely different from anything on table. Is, is what intrigues me. I, I know they announced that there's going to be a, a Hollis in season three. I would, yeah. Are you going to be coming back at all for that? I can't predict the future. <laughs> but Adam's a good friend of mine, so if he needs me, I, I walk to Mars for him. Let's see. We're going back to the early 90s. When you first read the script for uh, Candyman, what was your original thoughts on it? Um, when I first got the call, you know, I didn't audition for Candyman. I got a call saying, I want to see you, Miss Project. I didn't know what they meant because I only heard the title. Went in, met with Bernard, uh, who is a dear friend of mine, Bernard J. Rose. Um, I knew when I looked through the script that it, I had no idea it would last this long, but I knew that it was definitely an iconic character. I knew that the bees were something that would never had never been done and probably will never be done again. You know, just because those are practicals. 
It wasn't CGI, that was real time. Those are bees coming out of my mouth, and that shot alone is forever. Uh, the good news is that Bernard and I just reunited for uh, a version of Frankenstein, but if you Google it, it's gotten rave reviews. We just got another one this morning. Comes out at the end of February, Blu-ray. So uh, you got Xavier Samuels playing the monster, myself playing a blind homeless musician, Carrie Ann Moss from The Matrix, and Danny Houston. It's a good cast. It's not some like you know, and Bernard and Bernard and I hadn't worked together in 20 years, even though we stayed in contact. So. That definitely does sound like an amazing Blu-ray that would definitely need to be purchased. Yeah, um, always when they get theatricals, because that other Frankenstein that got put out, the tanked. Oh, yeah, the one with, I think, Aaron Eckhart or I, Frankenstein or something no, like that, I think it was? another one after that, the Daniel Radcliffe one. Oh, okay. With Victor. It, did, it went away in a week. Oh, wow. But ours is, is one for the ages, I'm telling you. And, and now... Right now is on an Alamo, there's an Alamo Theater Company... Have you heard of them? They started in yeah. San Antonio. Mm -hmm. So he went to, I couldn't come because I was committed here. But he's gone to five different theaters and they, it's sold out houses and people are blogging about it online. Awesome. And you said that comes out at the end of February? Yep. It comes okay. Out on 22nd in the UK and 27th, I believe, in the United States. Okay. And then a, another role um, that you were involved with in, in the 90s was in the, the remake of The Night of the Living Dead. Right. Um, how was it stepping into the shoes of something that somebody else has done? Was there any any uh, sort of um, nervousness about doing that role? No, actors, good actors are always nervous. And if you're not nervous, then you should quit. Because that first day on set, you're like, you should, you should have butterflies in your stomach. I mean, no matter how skilled you are, but I hardly get any sleep the day before my first day on set because I'm so excited. I'm a kid. It's like Christmas. You understand? Opening a new gift and seeing what's in there. Uh... I was in Pittsburgh doing a project separate from that, and I heard that they were doing a remake. When I was a very young man, I saw the original in a drive-in theater. You remember those? Yes. Uh, Some of the best ways to see movies. There, there's, I think, one in South Carolina left. Unfortunately, there used to be, you know, everywhere. But anyway, uh, so watching the original in black and white in the drive-in theater, nobody wanted to go to the concession stand. I mean, it was so impactful. And as an African American, I see a, a fellow actor that's carrying the movie. So that sealed it for me. I knew I wanted to do that. And then when I had an opportunity, uh, Tom, who was also a good friend, thought he had already knew what he wanted to do. But I like kind of grabbed him, sat him down, and just did a monologue for him. And that was on a Saturday, Monday, I had the job. Awesome. And you did an amazing job. It's actually one of, uh, honestly, in my opinion, one of the uh, few remakes that lives up to, if not surpasses, in some aspects, the uh, the original. I, I, I wouldn't go that far because the original was very important, uh, not only to the history of horror. George Romero just tweeted this morning that uh, it's the 25th anniversary of that film. Can you believe it? Oh, wow. 25. And I think it's already gotten a lot of likes. Oh, yeah. And uh, he just celebrated a birthday, too. Now, now you did... You, you did uh, you, you worked with him as well, because I know he helped uh, do the remake, right? Yeah, yeah, he was Savini set, directed, he was and then, okay. Yeah, yeah he was there. And, um... So I, that was also, you know, George Romero. I have a lot of respect for people that, you know, had a stranglehold on uh, what everybody in this room appreciates. Okay, and now with uh, The Flash and Zoom, were you a big comic book fan growing up? Was there any was certain the favorites? Kid. It was the only kid, so of course... The guy that brought me into the comic world was, of course, Batman. Bob Kane's Batman, okay? But as time went on, I was more of a Green Lantern person. Not the movies. Because he, it was all about imagination with him. You know, he could just will whatever that was and whatever he needed would come out. That would intrigue me. But I guess if I had to, Batman would be my number one. Okay. Yeah, well, so I was more of a DC guy, but I also love Steve Ditko, and uh, you know. well, personally, I am a, a DC guy as well. Yeah. First word I ever said was bat, and that's actually there you go. it's actually legitimate. See, I'm a little young for this, but I remember because I used to have to commute between my, my grandmother and my aunt, who both raised me, and you go to the bus stop, and there used to be newsstands right by there with comics, nothing but comics, and. They would let you browse maybe 10 minutes as long as you bought two, right? And you let's see, okay, what's it? And that would be my day. I grabbed six times, go over to my grandma's house and have my entertainment. 
Yeah, it's sad that the comic books aren't as big as they used to be now because of uh, electronics and all that and everything. You need that handheld thing, man, particularly with comic books. You got to save each page, you got to read the dialogue, you got to vision what's going on. But, you know, everything has its own cycle, its own life force. Exactly. Well, I don't want to keep any more fans away from your table, so I do want to thank you again for doing this uh, interview. Talking to you. Thank you, sir. Thank you uh, got a lot of information. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. Awesome. Take care. Tell Dave I said hello. All right. I will do that.